Final leg, back here for another video. Today we're talking about the top 10 field event competitions that went down in 2019. There were so many great performances across the board, both on the jumps and in the throwing events. Before I give you guys my personal top 10, go in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite field event competition was for 2019 across any event, on the throwing events or on the jumping events. So jumping into my top 10, first off at number 10, I have the men's pole vault competition at the Lausanne Diamond League. This turned out to be a huge clash between between Renola Villani, Mondo Duplantis, Sam Kendricks, Peter Olizic. These four guys were going for that Diamond League win. We saw Sam Kendricks and Peter Olizic though really highlighting this competition. They were both at 5.95 meters and they were clear through the entire competition. And that was a season's best for both of them. They stepped it up to 6.01 meters, but Peter Olizic and Sam Kendricks both missed all three attempts. They ended up having a jump off at 6.01 meters. Olizic managed to clear it on his first attempt that set not only a personal best but also a Polish national record as well as the world leading performance at the time. Sam Kendricks unfortunately wasn't able to clear the height giving Lizik the win for the competition and the Lausanne there but we also had Mandu Duplantis and we had Renola Villanin clearing 5.81 meters so really high quality competition. This was probably the best competition of the year even compared to Doha. We didn't have anyone clear 6 meters at the Doha World Championships. Lizik of course again he cleared 6.01 here so this this makes it my number 10, the men's pole vault at the Lausanne Diamond League. My number nine competition was the women's hammer throw at the USA National Championships up in July. This turned out to be a really great competition that went under the radar a little bit. We had Deanna Price going up against Gwen Berry. Deanna Price, in her second attempt, she managed to throw 77.5 meters. Only Gwen Berry in the history of the United States had thrown farther than that mark. So already really setting up the stage here. Gwen Berry, she managed to move into second place with a throw of 76.5 four six meters her that's her third farthest throw in the history of her entire career then we had Deanna Price really shut things down on her final attempt she managed to throw 78.24 meters which broke her own American record that she set in previous years really shutting down the competition she would stand as a world lead for the rest of the 2019 season and Gwen Berry's mark would also stand as number three in the world for 2019 of course you know Price would go on to win the world championships in Doha but this competition the USA National National Championships hammer throw for the women stands as my number nine from 2019. Moving up to number eight, I have the men's discus throw at the Rabat Diamond League. This turned out to be a great clash between two amazing throwers. We had Frederick Dackers going up against Daniel Stahl. Both of these guys have been going back and forth for the past couple years. We saw Dackers take the lead early on with a 67.09 meter throw in round one. Then Stahl responded very quickly in round two with 67.84 meters taking the lead over him. But then we saw Dackers go big in round three, shutting things down with 70 70.78 meters that was not only a personal best for him a Jamaican national record and moved him to number 19 all time in the discus throw so a huge performance for Dakers there Stahl would also throw farther later on in the season but this would stand as his fourth best throw for 2019 of course we know he would go on to win the world championships but again a great competition my number eight the men's discus throw at the Rabat Diamond League let's hop up to number seven where we have the men's long jump at the Doha World Championships another high quality competition. Juan Miguel Echevarria from Cuba was coming in as a clear favorite having jumped a world leading performance of 8.65 meters earlier in the season. In addition in the preliminary rounds in Doha he managed to jump 8.40 meters which stood as the fourth best jump of 2019 already. So definitely the favorite going into the finals but it turned out to be Tajay Gale from Jamaica. In round four he got out to a huge huge jump of 8.69 meters. A personal best moving him to number 11 all time in the long jump. A huge performance for the young athlete from Jamaica. We also had the Olympic champion Jeff Henderson. He came up big for second place in 8.38 meters. So a huge performance for him. And actually besides only two times in 2018, this was his farthest jump since 2015. So even farther than the jump that won him the Olympics in Rio 2016. Echevarria, he would ultimately come up third with a jump of 8.34 meters. So not nearly living up to the expectations 
conversations that he had, but again, a huge high quality competition. And what makes it even more thrilling was that Gail was the last qualifier to get into the finals. He almost missed qualifying by just three centimeters. So this was really a high quality competition. Again, my number seven, the men's long jump competition at the Doha World Championships. Let's talk about the triple jump. For my number six, I have the men's triple jump competition at the Paris Diamond League. This turned out to be a great back and forth between Will Clay and Christian Taylor, who have already been going back and forth for the past couple years. We saw Will Clay take the early lead in round one, jumping 17.36 meters. Christian Taylor, he managed to respond in round four, getting the lead back in 17.49 meters. So great, great high quality competition we have already. But Will Clay immediately responded also in round four, jumping 17.71 meters, taking that lead back. But we're not done. Christian Taylor, he managed to retake the lead, jumping 17.82 meters just after in round five. Not done again. I told you this was a great back and forth. Will Clay, he shut things down. In round six, he managed to jump 18.06 meters. A huge performance for him. Only his second best performance in the history of his career. Only behind the 18.14 meters he jumped previously in 2019. And this only four people in the history of the triple jump have jumped farther than Will Clay did here with his 18.06. Christian Taylor couldn't respond after that, but of course we know he went on to win the world championships. But because of this amazing back and forth from round to round, this makes it my number six, the men's triple jump at the Paris Diamond League. Before getting into my top five, let's talk about a couple honorable mentions that probably could have even made the list. First, I have the men's triple jump at the Doha World Championships. This turned out to be really high quality with Christian Taylor getting the win in 17.92 meters. Will Clay was not too far behind, jumping 17.7 four meters. We also had Hughes Fabrice Zango from Burkina Faso. He jumped a national record and an African continental record of 17.66 meters. We also had the best marks for place in third, fourth, and fifth place in the triple jump. So really high quality competition there. Also, I have the men's shot put at the USA Championships. We had three guys throw over 22 meters in the top three spaces. So just to make the USA team, you had to throw over 22 meters. It was led by Ryan Krauser. He managed to throw a huge performance of 22.62 meters. So great competition there. We also had the women's long jump at the Doha World Championships highlighted by Malaika Mihambo jumping that 7.30 meter jump on her final attempt in the competition, getting the gold medal, moving her farther up the all-time list. Also the top three ladies who got gold, silver, and bronze all jumped over 6.90 meters. So great competition at Doha. We also had the women's shot put at the Zurich Diamond League. Great competition with Li Zhao Gong from China. She managed to throw 20.3 meters, which would stand as a world leading performance for 2019. Chase Elay from the United States, she managed to throw 19.67 meters, getting second place in the competition, but and that would also stand as a number two throw in 2019. So those are my honorable mentions for 2019. Let's jump into my top five. First at number five, I have the women's triple jump at the Doha World Championships. High quality competition between all of the ladies. Yulomar Rojas, the favorite coming in, had jumped 15.41 meters prior to the world champs, which was the second best performance in the history of the triple jump, not too far off that world record. And she continued to roll and back up the performance in Doha here. In the second round, she managed to jump 15.37 meters, which was the fourth best jump in the history of the triple jump. So high quality competition, shutting it down, getting the gold medal with that performance. But she had also managed to jump 15.18 meters in round four, which is the 26th farthest jump in the triple jump in history. So really dominating and showing that high quality. We can't forget about Shanika Ricketts from Jamaica. On her third jump, she managed to jump 14.92 meters. Very close to her personal best, just two centimeters away from the personal best she set not too long ago at the Diamond League final. So great competition getting that silver medal there. We also had our countrywoman, Kimberly Williams, also from Jamaica. She managed to jump a personal best of 14.64 meters in round six, moving her to the third spot. But Katarina Ibar Gwynn, the very dominant triple jumper over the past decade, she she managed to overtake Williams jumping 14.73 meters, getting that bronze medal, adding to her collection of medals. So again, one of the deepest triple jump competitions that we've seen in the past couple years and easily the best triple jump on the women's side. My number five, the women's triple jump for the Doha World Championships. Getting into my number four, I have the women's high jump competition at the Doha World Championships. The clear favorite coming in was Maria Lasseskene, who has been dominant over the past couple years. At the two meter height, we have six women who were still in the competition competition and all of them prior to the world championships have jumped over two meters. We saw Maria Lasseskene clear on her first attempt
attempt, Vashti Cunningham also set a personal best, equaled her personal best, clearing two meters on her first attempt, and they were both clear throughout the entire competition, so sitting even at first place. We also had Yulia Levchenko and also Yaroslavo Mahuchik. They both managed to clear on their third attempts, keeping them in the competition, so these four ladies would be the ones moving up to the next height. We got to 2.02 meters. Again, Lasiskene, she managed to clear on her first attempt, solidifying her spot as the first place leader and in the gold medal position. Mohuchik was also over 2.02 meters and that height gave her a world under 20 record, breaking the world under 20 record that was previously set many years ago. So huge quality competition for her. Cunningham and Levchenko, they unfortunately were unable to clear the height. Cunningham, again, she didn't have as many misses through the competition, so she managed to get the bronze medal. Moving up to 2.04 meters though, Lasiskene is still dominating and clearing it on her first attempt, solidifying her spot in the gold medal position. Mahuchik would later on bow out from the competition. I think she was satisfied with her silver medal and the world under 20 record. So giving her the silver medal and giving Lasiskene the gold medal. Lasiskene would go on to try her attempts at 2.08 meters. Unfortunately, would miss her attempts, but getting that gold medal there. But what highlights this is this is only the third time in the history of the women's high jump that someone would jump 2.04 meters and come in second place, would lose. So this is a high quality competition. Again, my number four, the women's high jump at the Doha World Championships. Now getting into the top three, first I have the men's high jump at the Doha World Championships. This was so hard to put only as number three, probably one of my favorite competitions of 2019. Of course we had Bar Shim. He was coming in as the hometown favorite, going up and competing against his entire crowd. He was also coming in as a defending champion. So a lot of pressure coming into this meet. At 2.33 meters, we had Akimenko from Russia and also Nadeska from Belarus. They both cleared on their first attempts. Akimenko though had no misses through the competition, so he was in the lead. We also had Ivanyuk from Russia. He managed to clear on his third attempt in the competition. Barshim, he missed two times, but he managed to clear it on his third attempt. This really put a lot of pressure and it released the pressure from the crowd once Barshim cleared it. So getting him to go over and continue through the competition, we got up to 2.35 meters everyone was clear on their first attempt except for Nadesca. Later on, he would unfortunately bow out from the competition. He wouldn't be able to clear the further heights. We got up to 2.37 meters. This is where things really got hot. Three guys were left in the competition, but Barshim managed to jump over and clear on his first attempt, setting the crowd on fire. This is probably one of the greatest moments of the Doha World Championships in 2019, and he put pressure on the rest of the field. Unfortunately, no one would be able to clear the 2.3 37 meter height, giving Barshim the gold medal. Again, probably one of the greatest moments of the 2019 Doha World Championships. I could only imagine what it was like in this stadium, but this definitely puts it at my number three for 2019, the men's high jump at the Doha World Championships. Getting into the top two, first at number two, I have the women's pole vault at the Doha World Championships. This turned out to be a high quality competition between so many ladies and one of the deepest competitions in the history of the women's pole vault. We had Stefaniti, the defending champion, Sandy Morris, who had been silver a couple times in the past, as well as Sidorova. All three of these ladies were going for that gold medal. First, at 4.80 meters, though, we had six ladies who managed to clear the height. This was the first time in history that six women had cleared 4.80 meters. The most before this was only three ladies in the same competition. So already one of the best competitions in the history of the event. Going up to 4.85 meters, though, Stefaniti, she managed to miss once, but cleared it on her second attempt. But Sidorova and Morris, Morris, both these ladies cleared it on their first attempt and they were actually clear throughout the entire competition, no misses. So they were tied for first place. Getting up to 4.90 meters, we had Stefaniti taking the first jump and she missed on her first attempt. That led Sidorva and Morris to really go for it and they both cleared again on their first attempt. So no misses through the competition. That ended up putting pressure on Stefaniti because she missed, she wanted to go for that gold medal. So she passed up to the subsequent height. At 4.95 meters though, again, we had three ladies left in the competition, Stefaniti, Morris, and Sidorva. Like I said, Stefaniti missed her first attempt at 490, passed up to 495, unfortunately would not clear the height, so she would be out of the competition. So at 495, just to know, only three women in history have ever cleared over 4.95 meters. Sandy Morris is one of those ladies. Sidorva and Morris, they actually both missed on their first two attempts. So really high quality drama here, but then we saw Sidorva, she went for it and she managed to clear 
on her third and final attempt at the height. Morris unfortunately would not clear the height, which gave Sidorova the win, getting that gold medal, relegating Morris to the silver medal position once again. She has a lot of silver medals from the past, but again, this was high quality competition. Like I said previously, only three women before this competition had ever gone over 4.80 meters in the same competition. So high quality there. This also produced the best marks for place in history for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, 11th, and 12th place. So this competition was high quality, super deep from the top all the way to the bottom. 5.95 meters would also have won every single previous world championship competition, except for 2005 when Isimbayeva at the time had set a world record at the time, but high quality competition. Again, my number two, the women's pole vault at the Doha World Championships. Now, I think you guys can probably guess my number one. I have the men's shot put at the Doha World Championships. This lived up to the hype and really was a culmination of an amazing shot put season. We had eight guys coming into the meet who had thrown equal to or better than 22.22 meters. Really, really high quality. And again, this lived up to the hype. In round one, we had Ryan Krauser get out to the early lead, throwing 22.36 meters, really solidifying himself. But then we had Tom Walsh from New Zealand. He responded immediately in round one. He got out to 22.90 meters. Not only a personal best, a national record, but it actually moved him to number four all time in the shot put. Huge, huge high quality performance for him. So we have Tom Walsh and Ryan Krauser sitting in the top two positions. Round two though, we had Darlin Romani from Brazil. He managed to get out to another huge throw of 22.53 meters. That moved him into second place. So already just to get on the podium, you have to throw over 22.36 meters. High quality competition already. In round three, Ryan Krauser, he managed to match his first performance throwing 22.36 meters. So still sitting in third place. But in round four, we had Krauser improve up to 22.71 meters, moving him into second place position. And it was just three centimeters away from a personal best that he set earlier this season. Competition is really getting high quality to get on the podium. You have to throw over 22.53 meters. Those are the top three right now. Round five though, Walsh went out for it again. He managed to throw 22.56 meters, backing up the performance he had in round one. Round six though is where things really took a turn and went for that high quality. We had Joe Kovas. He was sitting in fourth place. He didn't go over 22 meters yet, but he went big for it. He managed to throw 22.91 meters, moving all the way into the lead, surpassing Tom Walsh and moving him to number three all time in the shot put. This is high quality competition, but that wasn't it. Ryan Krauser, he was still progressing. He managed to get out to 22.90 meters, a personal best for him as well, moving him into second place position based on countback. Remember, he had the 22.71, but then Tom Walsh had the 22.56. So Krauser moved into that second place. Tom Walsh sat in third place. Tom Walsh, he would take his throw in the sixth round, but unfortunately it would be a foul. So he would have to sit in third. But again, look at the medals. Joe Kovas with the gold medal, 22.91 meters. Ryan Krauser with the silver medal, 22.90 meters. Tom Walsh with the bronze medal, also 22.90 meters. So the top three positions only separated by one centimeter. This is one of the best competitions in the history of field events. Again, without a doubt, one of the best ever. We have to mention some of the accolades. We have the best marks ever for second, third, fourth, sixth, seventh, and ninth place in the men's shot put in the history of the event. Huge quality there. Also, before this competition in Doha, only once in the history of the world champs or the Olympics had 22 meters not won the gold medal. Only once in history. And remember, Romani, here he threw 22.53 meters and only ended up fourth, let alone even getting onto the podium or winning gold in every single previous world championships or Olympics. We also have to take note ahead of these three guys on the all time list, we have Randy Barnes and Alf Timmerman. Randy Barnes set the world record back in the day, but the same year he set the world record, later on that year, he was unfortunately banned for doping and he had a lot of his marks annulled. His world record still stands on the books today, but it has has to be taken into consideration. In addition, Ulf Tremendman, he competed for East Germany during the 80s when we know the Eastern Bloc had a lot of state-sponsored doping. Like Randy Barnes, his marks still stand on the books, but I think this needs to be taken into consideration to consider the perspective and how high quality these marks are when it comes to all-time lists. So again, without a doubt, my number one competition for 2019, the men's shot put at the Doha World Championships. All right, so those are my top 10 performances 
for 2019. Of course, there's so many that I probably missed. My honorable mentions could probably put on the top 10, but just my personal favorite. Let me know what you guys had as your favorite performance for 2019. Make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and be back again in the next video. Thanks.